Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start to build this section out right in here. So just as I have with other images, the first thing I want to do is to take a measurement. So I've been using my rectangular marquee as my little ruler, and I can come on in and pull from what I make a, a div tag to contain all three, and then each one will be its own div tag. So I'm looking at 270 by 750, and I can even bring it in a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to go for, I'll go for 265 by 750. Okay. All right. So here goes again. I write things down as I work. So I come on in to my insert, insert div. This one, I can say it will be after tag and it will be after my nav tag. I'm going to name this one. It will be ID because there'll only be one of these on a page. News, new CSS rule. I'll come in. Okay. And what I'm really doing here is just setting the size of the box and I'm going to make the box. 265 by 750, 750. I will hit OK. OK, and there it is. Next thing I want to do is start building out my other elements. I will delete this little part right in here. Next series of things are going to come in the next, right at the, at the beginning after the start of this tag. So deselect this and I want to look at building really just one of these and then repeating it for the two below it. So here goes. I know one thing as I look at this all I can tell that I actually could make the whole content once a little bit, bring it in a little bit. And I want you to think too, you know, as I work that, you know, it's okay to come in and start changing things around a little bit. That really is kind of the way it goes. Once you start working, you start realizing, oh, you know what? This needs to change here. And we can always do that by opening up our CSS styles bar right in here. And, you know, we can just come on in. I'm going to actually delete this padding. And I'm going to bring this in to 200. All right. That's more like it, actually. I'm going to go out a little bit, 205. All right, great. Now I can also come in um, to content and hit current and there I am and make this the width smaller. So it comes in a little bit more, right? And then, you know, we could even come in and make this one and we know where we are. We just hit current and we can make this width maybe a little bit more, give ourselves a little bit more room. All right, so that's really the story. And then there's a lot of possibilities as we work through working with the web. All right, this is starting to look good. I want to continue to look at adding my other um, bits of information. All right, so I fixed up some of these sizes. Now I want to come in and start adding this content. And we have this all right in here. Now, a great thing to do, just showing you how you go about getting this all in Photoshop, is come to what's new, triple click onto the font, and get this information. This is the information that we want. 16 points, it's Georgia font. We can double click and we have our color. Our color, write down the number, four zeros, two threes, and we're all set. So let's start taking a look and start designing and getting this info in right in here. Post headlines, that's what I'm going to name this. So I'm going to come on in and what I want to do is I'm going to do it at insertion point. What does that mean? Well, it means that I want to be right, I want my cursor to be right after the opening tag for sidebar post because this is sidebar post. Now I come in, I come insert div, it's going to be at insertion point. I'm going to name this one post headlines. I'm going to create a new CSS rule on style CSS. Okay, my font family is Georgia. My font size. Now, I did find that as I started to design this that the, I wanted to change the font size a little bit. So I'm going to change it to 13 points. I'm going to change it to points. Again, we're looking at points, pixels, or so many different ways that we can measure this out. 
we're going to add in our color. And what you see is as I put the number in, 800, 800, and I also changed the color a little bit. Sometimes you know you have your, your color in Photoshop, but then as you start up, oh, all right, I'm missing a number. Three zeros, eight, one, two, three, eight, zero. So it should be, um, it should be, oh, look at me, I'm putting it in the wrong spots. That's the problem. Let's try this one more time. Eight, one, two, three, eight, zero. Then we'll see our color appear. And what I also did too, was I wanna come in and I'm gonna put a little bit of a margin on this. So I'm gonna make the margin from the left and I'll make it 40 pixels. And we will hit OK. And we'll hit OK. And there we have it. Now, it popped out. Should not be there. See, it popped out over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just cut, cut this line of code and paste it in. So I come, I highlight that line of code. I know it's div class post headlines. And I want it to be right after the opening tag of the sidebar post. So I can control click, right click. I can cut, I'll cut that right out, and I'll take this right here and I will paste it right in. Voila, it's where it needs to be. Now, um, I might even have to come in and let's put in what, i do that. It's very easy to um, delete everything. So what's, New question mark design view. Now definitely I want to move this down a little bit. And that's easy enough to do. And while I have the rule open, I can um, actually I'm going to add a little, I can add some margin. Why not a margin from the top? Let's see what happens if I do 10 from the top. Apply, it comes down. Let's do a little bit more. Much better. I might even want to go 15, but I'll just leave it as it is right now. I click off and there it is. What's new? Now I want to add my button, my button, my button. Again, I can open back up Photoshop. I can zoom in a little right in here. I want to add this drop center thing. Now the beautiful thing is I can do all of this in CSS. CSS3 actually, so I can come on in, I could take a measurement of this, so get a sense of how big it is, but I don't really base the size on, I'm gonna base the size more on what I have, um, the size of my div tag. And another thing, if I wanna get the color, I can just come on in here, I can sample the color, and then double click and write down my color number one more time. So let me go on back here and get started. So I am going to insert the div tag one more time after this one. And again, I'm going to go on into split view and make sure that I am after my cursor is after the close of this line of code, which is um, for the post headlines. Now I'm going to insert another div tag. Come on in, insert div. And this one, I'm going to name button. And I'm going to make a new CSS rule. I'm going to say, okay. Uh, now, when I come on into the button, there's a bunch of different things I wanna do. I'm gonna start with the background. Okay, and I'm gonna type my color number in. Two zeros, one, two, four sixes. One, two, three, four. There we have it. From here, I am going to come on in to the box. I'm gonna make a box. I'm going to make my box. I'm going to give it the height of 22 pixels. The height of 22, 22 pixels. I'm going to give it the width of 95 pixels. I'm going to actually give a little bit of a margin from the top because I want to move it down. So I'm going to undo this and margin from the top. I'm going to say three pixels. Margin from the right. I'm going to put the margin from the right Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in padding. I'm losing my mind. Okay. All right, so I'm going to come to the margins from the top. Put this one in at three pixels. 
I'm going to make the right auto, the left auto. The beautiful thing about when you make them auto is they end up fixing themselves. I'm going to come back into type. I'm going to choose my font family, Georgia. I'm going to choose my font size. I'm going to put my font size in at 10 points. I'm going to choose my font color. Here's my font color. It's FF. FF CC. Again, I can go in, I've shared this many times, come on in right onto this layer and get that color. That would be what I would do. Click, find the button, find the date. Oh, that's okay. All right, let's try this one more time. It's all about, it's very easy in Photoshop to not get the, it, um, to not select the font correctly and make another font layer, which I just did. If you ever do that, you just click here and then delete it. Yes, delete it. Okay, coming on back to Dreamweaver, looking at what I have created so far. There we have it. It's actually looking pretty good. Now I do want to come back to the box. I do want to add some padding from the top. I want to add seven pixels from the top. And I also want to add from the left, I want to add 40 pixels. All right, now I'm going to hit Okay. Okay. And there we have it now. But the problem is, is when we look at this, I'm going to put my date in. Um, July 31st, 2013. Now, when we look at this button, we're thinking, hmm, but I don't see my shadow or anything like that. What I always find is um, the best way, this is all CSS3. And the best thing that I always do is I always go out and get the code from other sources. Um, and it's fine, just do a Google search. There's a great um, blog, css3info.com, that I go to constantly and look at their, their code, which is really awesome. So I'm gonna need to put this code right in. So for the button, first thing I wanna, first thing I wanna do is I wanna add the border radius. And this is a CS, uh, CS3 border radius. Um, and I want it to be the same on all sides, so it will be pretty easy. I will make the radius of my border for my um, button 15 pixels. Okay, so there we have it. That is a line of CSS. Now I wanna do my web shadow, my drop shadow. And I'm going to give you the code to type in. I wanna actually show you where to go to find it though. So if I come on in and go to www.cs, Three up uh, CSS three info. This is really a great site to come on in CSS three previews, uh, and you can see that there's a lot of really great things here. And these are some of the big things that have come with CSS three, and one of them is the whole box shadow. So I can see that you know here's this example of this one right here, and here's the code. And it gives you great information about how, okay, this is a story though for Mozilla and WebKit, you need to make sure that you have these lines. It would, you know, supposedly we'd be able to just come in and write it like so, but I'm gonna copy this line of code, these couple lines I'm going to paste in, I'm gonna show you what happens and then what they mean and how to change them. And CSS3 also has some really great info uh, explaining to you different things. So first thing right here, the dot eight eight, that is the uh, color. Okay, that is actually the color. Um, the one is the amount of the blur. Uh, this one's the amount of the blur, and this is how many pixels the shadow is from the X and the Y axis. So I'm gonna lower these, actually, actually I can preview it first. I'll come file, save all. Another thing with the CSS3, you don't always see it when you're previewing it. So I'm going to come into live view and there we have it. Now again, I can see that I need to work a little bit more with this to make it work a little bit better. All right, and I'm going to come back um, to design view, get rid of the live, move this down maybe a little bit more and change this one up as well. So I'm going to come into split and I'm in style CSS. I'm gonna change this one to five. Change this one to five. Five, I might even go lower. I, I don't like the shadow out so much. 
two. Two. And again, I recommend, uh, you know, if you want more information on these, go to CSS3 Info's blog and read up. Um, lots of really good information there. All right, the other thing that I want to do is uh, move this down a little bit more. The what's new down a little bit more. And actually, my best bet may be also to add a little bit of padding to my sidebar post. I think that's actually a better way to go. Um, and I could just come in. I could even, you know, if I wanted to add the it in this way, you'll find that as you start to write, it will give you this. And um, I'm going to put in refresh and we should see it. So it pushed that all down a little bit. Uh, I might even end up going to 10. That's actually a better place to put it than putting it in the, the top margin in from the what's new. I think that's actually a must, much better way to do that. All right, so I'm going to file, save all. Let's preview it one more time. Come into live view, and that's looking much better now.